Brian here from btoby.com. Tonight I'm here at our local library to assess ISO performance of a variety of cameras. Most recently the Nikon D600, but additionally the Nikon D800e and the Nikon D4. Further, I also brought along the D700, which is a prior generation camera to assess the improvements in sensor technology. Now I picked the library location because it's a well-lit nighttime setting. The reason is, is that provides a high dynamic range that we can assess both ISO and dynamic range performance of these cameras. So this is going to be a field test. The results are not going to be quite measurable, but they will be comparable to one another. So let's see what we got here. Here is the Nikon D4. Here is the D600. Here is the Nikon D700. And here, but not least, is the D800E. Now we're going to assess two things. ISO and dynamic range, and we talked about that we can't measure it, so we're going to compare between all these cameras, the 700, the 800, the 600, and the D4. But we're going to use two techniques here to measure this. We're going to A, use the high ISO measurements. So we're, we're going to basically set up for ISO 1600, 3200, 6400, 12800, and 25600, and compare these between the cameras. Secondly, we're going to do a base ISO test, where what we're going to do is we're going to overexpose the shot by four exposure values, and then later compensate that by bringing the highlights down four exposure values in post-processing. And what that's going to do is that's going to see how well we can retain the highlights in, in these cameras, how well they can retain the highlights. Um, and we're also going to do that for the shadows. We're going to underexpose for four exposures, and we're going to bring that up in post-processing and see how well we can retain shadow detail. Now, um, there is some level of complexity here because all these sensors have different uh, megapixels. So they're all the same size, but they have different megapixels. So the 700 has 12, the D4 has 16, the D800 has 36, and the D600 has 24. So there is some complexity there. We'll get into that when we get into the post-processing section. So let's get started here and fire away some shots. Um, one of the things I'd like to also add is that the, I've used the 70 to 200 here in the test setup. And what that does, that allows me to exchange cameras without um, altering the settings for the shot. Also, autofocus is off. Uh, we're in manual mode and we're going to assess these in RAW, primarily because the algorithms in, in, when using JPEG for, for noise reduction is going to vary, especially with the 700 because it's a whole generation behind than these new cameras. So we really want to take that out of the equation and look at the raw camera capability between these cameras. And, and, and we'll go from there. Okay, we're back in the lab and we want to assess uh, what we saw in the field. Um, we're going to start with the base ISO test and what we're going to evaluate is the, um, the differences. One is the, the, the highlights where we overexposed and we want to bring those highlights in and see how well the highlights are retained in, in the image, the raw image quality between the cameras. And in this test, uh, we want to zoom in on the, um, the window, just a particular area of interest that had a decent dynamic range um, where there was highlighted area due to the lights. So when we, when we look at this uh, data, uh, there wasn't uh, ultra conclusive e evidence between the cameras that anyone did a particularly great job. It seems that in digital, it's not like the film days or negative film where you could, 
bring in the highlights and, and they had a, an ability to capture a, a wide dynamic range. Once you clip in digital, it's pretty hard to bring back the highlights. Um, the D700, we wanted to conclude that the D700 didn't do as well as a job as the, uh, the D800, the D4, and the D600. Um, the D800, if anything, did a, a little bit better than all the rest of the cameras. Um, not much to talk about here though. Let's move on to the shadow detail, um, where we underexpose the image by four stops. And in post-processing, we brought that up simply by moving the exposure slider in um, Lightroom or Adobe Camera Raw. Now here we had much different evidence. Um, here we had um, a, a lot of shadow noise in the D700 and uh, the D800 paired the best uh, and the D4 came in probably third next to the D600. The D600 was able to retain a little bit more shadow detail than what the D4 could do. So. Again, I think the winner here is the D800, the, then followed by the D600, the D4, and then the D700 is quite separated down um, in, its, in its ability to, to pull up shadow noise as well as these new cameras can do. Um, one of the things is the, the images are all different sizes and we're assessing this at one-to-one -one pixel um, viewing or 100% viewing. So that's why the sizes are a bit different when you view these um, together. All right, so we're back here at our library shot, and we're gonna now evaluate the high ISO performance of these cameras. And we're basically evaluating noise and dynamic range, and we're watching how these degrade as we increase ISO. So let's begin here at ISO 3200. And one of the things we did to emphasize these results was to increase um, the exposure by two EV, or two exposure values. And this was just done to emphasize the noise so you can see this in the video hopefully. Um, now the cameras look better than what, what you're going to see here but uh, we want to we really want to show the noise and the differences between them. We want to make the re these results more distinguishable bet between the cameras. So if we look at the, um, the D800 um, there's a lot of detail especially in the region above the window where there's these bricks um, there's a lot of detail retained there at ISO 3200 and that's one of the power of this sensor is that it's so so fine with its 36 megapixels that it can capture a lot of detail. So now if we move over to the D700 there's not a lot of detail in there but it still has a decent dynamic range and the image is still usable. If we go over to the D600 you can now see that the D600 is holding on pretty well like the D800 and if we go over to the D4 you can also see that it probably looks the best. It has the minimal color noise involved and it looks pretty clean. So, um, with that said, I think that the D4 wins out here, but if you're really interested in capturing detail, the D800 is still the champ and the D600 is not far behind it. Let's move on to ISO 6400. At ISO 6400, things begin to change. Uh, the D800 is getting a bit more noisy. Uh, it still has good chroma noise, so there's not a lot of chroma noise going on in, in the equation. It looks pretty clean there. Um, the detail is starting to get washed out due to the squashing of its dynamic range here at ISO 6400. The D700 was starting to get chroma noise coming into the equation or color noise, um, and the dynamic range is, is, is pretty washed out. If we go over to the D600, the D600 looks a tad bit better than the D800 in this case. Again, not much color noise either. And if we go to the D4, the D4 wins out here. As you can see, it's holding its dynamic range a bit better. And the detail in the bricks above the window is slightly uh, better in terms of its dynamic range performance and, and less noise that's involved in the rest of these cameras. But things change again as we go up to 12800. If we go up to 12800, we're starting to get washed out in detail in the D800. Um, and the D700, we're getting a lot of chroma noise in there. Um, and if we go over to the D600, the D600 again is probably coming in second here. And if we look at the D4, the D4 is really hanging onto its dynamic range now and it's really becoming more significant now than it did in, in the prior ISO testing. Um, and again, hardly any chroma noise in the D4. That probably looks the best there. Now, when we step it up to 25600, these results get really distinguished. 
the D800. Now look at the area above the bricks. There's hardly any detail in there. Um, so the 36 megapixels was great up until a point. So uh, it's because the dynamic range is really getting squashed and the signal to noise is really getting squashed. And we're getting a lot of noise factors coming in in the D800. The D700, forget it, there's, there's color noise there. And there was some color noise starting to creep up in the D800E at this ISO. Um, and, and same was true for the D600. The D, D600 starts to get some color noise and its dynamic range is squashed. You can see there's hardly any detail in the bricks as well. But the D4 hangs onto that dynamic range. And that dynamic range is really important when you're talking at these high ISOs because you can still capture some of the detail above the bricks better than you can in the other cameras. Additionally, the color noise is not present in the D4 as it is in the other cameras. So the D4 is really retaining uh, good image quality at these higher ISOs and, and it definitely stands out at 25600. Now what we did is um, we brought the results, um, well we went back to our library shot and we wanted to, to get some quantitative results. We wanted to get some numbers laid out and, and, and not just use our visual eye to inspect between these, these cameras. Um, so we wanted to look at an area of the, of the sky, something that was just real boring, has a lot of shadow noise in it. So we just took an area of the sky and we evaluated this region of interest. We brought it into MATLAB to, to do some um, math on this. And, and all we did is we took the standard deviation. It got the, basically the root mean squared of the, the power of the noise and assessed it uh, and got some signal to noise ratios um, that I'd like to discuss. And we started at ISO 3200. Um, and the first thing we did is we looked at its native resolution. So we didn't resize these images whatsoever. We're looking at 100% detail. And um, what we got was that the D4 still achieves the best SNR, still has the best signal to noise ratio at 27.31 uh, dB. And the D800E was uh, 3 dB behind that at about 24.26 dB. And the D600 was slightly better than the D800E at 25.18 and the Nikon D700 was uh, trailing behind at 23. But when we resize these images to uh, bring them down to a similar playing field, if we, if we resize all these images down to seven megapixels and then reassess that same region of interest, what you will see is that D800E starts to excel. It really gains signal to noise performance. And they all increase when you do this, but because the D800E has such a high resolution sensor, what you're seeing is, um, well, let's talk about what happens when you resize these images. When you go from a higher resolution down to a lower resolution, you're undersampling the data. And when you undersample data, you're really passing this information through a low pass filter because you're removing the higher frequencies. So what does that do to the D800E? Well, the D800E is a very high resolution image and it has a lot of fine detail and the noise is also fine. So when you pass it through a low pass filter, you're removing all that high frequency noise and all of a sudden the signal to noise ratio increases. So you get better performance as you resize this sensor down to something that's seven megapixels. And DxO Mark does this in their measurements, their lab measurements as well. When they, when they provide the print option on their assessment of the cameras, you can see that it'll say that they, they resize the images down to eight megapixels. Um, whereas their screen um, segment, that is its, at its native resolution. So that's one thing to note. So if you're gonna use these, these images at a lower resolution, something for web use or print use, uh, then you, um, we're gonna get different numbers. We're gonna get at different SNR values. And you'll see that the D800 here shows up at 32.6 dB SNR, and the D4 trails now behind that at 32.14 dB. And the D600 is not far behind that at 31.98. And again, the D700 is slightly below that. So uh, this tells you that if you aren't going to use the sensor at its full potential, that you can um, gain more signal to noise ratio, a little bit better performance if you resize these images. Because what you're doing is you're resampling it down to a lower resolution. However, if we look at ISO 25600, this is not the case. Well, it is the case, but the D800 doesn't have enough dynamic range to really outperform the D4 here. And the D4 really separates itself. So the D4 at 25600 had a signal to noise ratio of 20 dB, and the D800E had a signal to noise ratio of 16 dB. And the Nikon D600 was a slight better. 
But when we go over to the seven megapixel size and we resize these images again, the dynamic range of the D800E is not well retained. So the information is not an issue of fine noise anymore. The, the equation becomes a problem with dynamic range. So let's look at 25600 at 7 megapixels, the D4 is at 24.12 dB and the D800E is at 21.86 and the Nikon D600 still, because it can retain slight better dynamic range at this higher ISO, uh, has a slight advantage as well. Now, these, these numbers again aren't 100% um, accurate. So we're just taking a quick field assessment and, and we're, we're looking at the dy dynamic range and the noise in these cameras at these higher ISO settings. So I like to conclude that really it comes down to your intended use. It comes down to what are you planning on doing with a camera. And the D4 is tuned more towards the higher ISO range. At ISO 800, using its full 16 megapixels um, really starts to excel here that you know beyond ISO 800 the D4 really uh, takes note. Now the D800E at ISO 100 and 200 is probably the best image quality you can attain from any of these cameras. It's, it's incredibly sharp, it has a lot of dynamic range, a lot of color depth, a really brilliant camera. The D600 still is not far behind either of these cameras. That's why it's such a good value. That's why the D600 is really a cool camera. Uh, because the features are still on par with some of these higher, more expensive cameras, but it comes at a much better value. So the D600 is a jack of all trades camera and hangs with the big boys. And the D700 now is a bit behind these cameras. You can really see that it's a whole generation behind. You can, you can see that it's aged compared to these other cameras. Not to say that you can't take great imagery with the D700. I've taken great shots for over five years with the D700. It's, it's an excellent camera. So, well not five years, I think it was three years, but um, anyway, the bottom line is, is that get the camera that works best and you can see that the D4, best for your needs, the D4 really holds well um, to, the, to the higher ISOs. And this concludes our testing. And lastly, I'd like to end um, by asking you to go visit the website btoby.com. We have the Nikon D600 review, the 800E review, and the D4 review as well. And uh, we go into a lot more detail on the features and capabilities of these cameras there. Uh, also, check me out on Google Plus as well. Um, I like to post frequently on Google Plus more so than I do on Facebook or Twitter.